everybody, it's Anna, and we're really glad to be with you today. Um, I'm speaking to you on June 16th, and of course we're coming up to uh, a very uh, important anniversary. June 25th marks the one-year anniversary of uh, last year's G20, G8 Summit. Uh, the G20 was held here in Toronto, and um, of course many of you participated. I participated in demonstrations, uh, helped to organize and we saw incredible abuses of police power during that weekend as well as incredible abuses of uh, public spending. Um, just the other day on July, on Monday, July 13th, I had a chance to represent the Toronto Police Accountability Coalition uh, at the last in a series of three public hearings that the Toronto Police Services Board commissioned. Uh, they asked uh, former justice Morden to sit on these hearings and to hear submissions from members of the public, uh, members of police forces and others. And so I got a chance to talk on TPAC's behalf about our observations about civilian oversight. Uh, this review is one of many different kinds of reviews going on. The Police Services Board is particularly interested in understanding what or in hearing from the public um, what went wrong that weekend in terms of civilian oversight. And so TPAC um, had a chance to speak about this and what I talked to the, uh, Mr. Warden and other lawyers about that night was the um, four failures in terms of the police's conduct that, uh, during the G20. And of course we've seen lots in the news about them. <clears throat> but as we come up to the anniversary, it's important that we remember uh, just how awful the abuses that happened that, uh, that weekend were. Uh, we had over a thousand people arrested and detained that weekend, the biggest mass arrest in Canadian history, bigger than the uh, War Measures Act, bigger than the um, arrests um, uh, any time during the history of Canada. So it's really important for us to remember that that's not something that we um, should just sweep under the rug. That's an incredible moment in Canadian history, a terrible moment in Canadian history uh, of mass arrests. Um, the police job that weekend, the police will tell you that their job was to protect the world leaders and that because the world leaders were protected, that they did their job. But TPAC argued to the hearing that the police job was much more than that. The police had a duty and always have a duty to protect our, uh, charter, uh, our charter rights, the public's rights under the Charter of um, Rights and Freedoms. Uh, of course, we saw that they dismally failed. In fact, did they not only they not only did not protect our uh, guaranteed rights, they actually abused those rights with illegal search and seizures, with <clears throat> arbitrary detention, with um, with uh, uh, blocking our right to dissent, uh, blocking our right to pe uh, to protest, uh, blocking our freedom of expression. Uh, the police acted in many ways that weekend to try to shut down protests before it even happened, to try to dissuade people uh, from coming downtown and participating, uh, from searching people. They were searching people on the street, they were searching people on streetcars, they were searching people on the subway. They, uh, made a, they acted under a law or made up a law or misinterpreted a law um, that uh, was enacted in secret by the Premier of the province, Dalton McGinty, along with the Chief of Police, Bill Blair. A law, a public safety law, was enacted that no one knew about. Um, and then when uh, the police were misinformed about that law and searched people far, far from the fence, the law was designed to, it was a, an old law that was designed to protect public works and that law was widely, widely misinterpreted to justify searches and seizures. Um, another police job during, uh, another thing that they're supposed to do during this, any kind of public demonstration or public gathering is to protect people in vi from violence. And in fact, they did the opposite from that. The police um, not only did not protect people from violence, they actually contributed to it. Um, the police culture took over that weekend. Um, and uh, the aggressiveness and arrogance and intimidation tactics that people in Toronto, marginalized people and racialized people in Toronto experience every day uh, at the hands of some police officers right across this city. We saw that demonstrated, that arrogance and intimidation and violence. We saw that demonstrated by uh, police right across the city against um, anyone who ventured into downtown. We saw organizers <coughs> picked up from their homes 
and uh, homes raided and organizers picked up and driven around the city with no charges laid. We saw incredible intimidation of, of people and we saw police officers um, acting as if there was no law except the, the ones that they decided uh, to impose upon the people. Um, we also saw incredible misspending of public funds and I'm just going to read to you a little bit of what happened that weekend. The auditor, the federal auditor, has just come out with their report and they found that a total of $510 million was spent on just policing the G20. So that doesn't include the money that was wasted by Tony Clement uh, that was uh, scattered around his ridings in northern Ontario as a way of buying votes uh, leading up to the uh, coming election. Um, <clears throat> that $510 million doesn't include that. That just is uh, spending on policing during the summit over a period of three days. Um, that's a lot, a lot of money. Uh, but compare it to what was spent just six months before at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the previous G8, G20 summit, $12.2 million. Just six months before, $12 million spent in Pittsburgh, which is an, another incredible amount of money for three days of work. But in Toronto and in Huntsville, in Canada, $510 million. Imagine the housing that could be built with that kind of money. Imagine the social services and community services and programs that could be um, provided with that kind of money. Imagine the clean drinking water and schools that could be provided in First Nations communities in this country for that kind of money. It just boggles the mind. In short, uh, d individual police officers were heard to be bragging about the amount of money they made over three days in Toronto as they went back to their home services in, uh, in cities around the country. For example, in Charlottetown sent six officers, $52,000 spent uh, paid to those officers over the three days. Edmonton sent 40 officers, $342,300 spent on those officers over three days. And it goes on and on and on. The Barrie Police Force provided 24-hour security for the G20 Command Center in Barrie, not in Toronto, in Barrie for 13 days at a cost of $70,000. Um, it just is incredible amounts of money. And when we see uh, we've got a government in power right now, that the same people that wasted all of that public money now have a majority government. Uh, the guy who was in charge of wasting over $50 million on gazebos and sidewalks and uh, roads being paved far, far, far from the summit sites um, is now in charge of uh, the Treasury Board. Just boggles the mind. And we've got to stay uh, involved in criticizing this and we've got to stay involved in calling for a comprehensive review into this. So those are some of the points that TPAC made. We made other points as well, but um, including the fact that police not only did not do their job, they uh, did not protect anyone from uh, property damage. Uh, there were uh, um, people going up and down Young Street, of course, breaking windows, uh, and uh, the police stood by and did nothing. So they not only didn't do their job, they abandoned uh, the people of Toronto while they raked in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. The important thing to remember about the G20 summit is that this is the kind of experience that people across this city have all the time. There are communities in this city and, um, named as priority neighborhoods, racialized communities, low-income communities, homeless people, people who work and live on the street, sex workers, who experience this kind of arbitrary detention, arbitrary searches, uh, questioning, demands for ID. Um, they experience that all of the time. The reason it came to light uh, and caused the outrage that it did during the G20 is because people who don't normally experience this in Toronto experienced it, so-called innocent bystanders, um, people, white middle class people who had come down to downtown to protest and also many who were just living and working in downtown. So it's important that we remember that, of course, we need to protest what happened at the G20. We need to call the police to account. We need to call the governments, uh, the level of governments to account. But we need to remember that this isn't just important when it happens to uh, mainstream folks or uh, white middle class folks at an event like the G20. This is an issue we need to be talking about all the time because there are many people in this city uh, and across the country, Aboriginal people in particular, so overrepresented in our prisons and this is their experience all the time. So I want to tell you about a few events coming up that I hope that you'll be able to attend. 
uh, coming up that are talking about policing in general and are also particularly talking about the G20. On Monday, June 20th, the Toronto Police Accountability Coalition is sponsoring a forum at the 519 Church Street Community Centre. It's called Rethinking Police, a public forum, and we're going to be looking at uh, where money should be cut in policing and the budget, uh, alternatives to how police currently deal with young people, how do we end sexist, racist, and other inequitable police practices, uh, and challenging police culture. It should be a good discussion, and I hope that you'll join us there. It's from 7 till about 9.30 p.m. on Monday, June 20th, and there's a Facebook event. You can just look for Rethinking Toronto Police. <clears throat> on Thursday, June 23rd, we have an event co-sponsored by the Canadian Labour Congress and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. It's called G20 Lessons Learned, Messages Lost, another public forum. It's on Thursday, June 23rd at 6.30 p.m. It's taking place at Campbell House, which is on the northwest corner of Queen and University Avenue. Uh, and that's a talk to talk about um, uh, the G20, uh, what was learned, how to move forward, and how activists can ensure their messages are heard. So that'll be a good event to attend. Uh, the night following, on June 24th, uh, the, um, an event that's called One Year After the Toronto G20 Police State Will Win. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's the struggle continues. And that's organized by the Women's Coordinating Committee for a Free Walmapu, or Toronto. Um, lots of uh, performances, uh, lots of people. It's an event to support Indigenous struggle. It's an event to support G20 arrestees. And it's an event to call for solidarity uh, with all of those affected by the G20 and affected by the police state and affected by um, the arbitrary imposition of borders, uh, Indigenous rights. So it's a solidarity event on June 24th. And that's happening at the Graduate Students Union at 8 p.m. on that evening, 16 Bancroft Avenue. Uh, just east of Spadina, two and a half lights south of Bloor. Uh, go to wcctoronto.wordpress.com. And finally, the last event I want to tell you about is Saturday, June 25th, called G20 Redux. It's a rally from 2 to 5 p.m. at Queen's Park in Toronto. Um, it's the anniversary, of course, of the beginning of the G20 Summit. It's co-sponsored by the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, the Ontario Federation of Labour, the Canadian Federation of Students, and the Council of Canadians. So that's at Queen's Park on Saturday, June 25th from 2 to 5 p.m. And the G20 Defence Fund continues to operate, continues to fundraise, and continues to uh, uh, take applications for people who were arrested and detained during the G20. Uh, we've had two rounds of applications so far. I'm one of the trustees that sits on that fund. Uh, I encourage you to continue to donate to the G20 Legal Defense Fund. Uh, these trials are going to continue for at least another two years, and there, people will be piling up expenses. Um, all of these expenses caused by the state and by the actions of the police, um, as I've just been telling you about. So please go to g20.torontomobilize.org and find out how you can continue to donate to this important cause and show your solidarity with all of those arrested during the G20 and all of those fighting for a better world. Thanks a lot.